It's definitely been a while, perhaps too long of a while, since I've done kind of more of a health-related video. The reason that I started my channel was not just to talk about beauty products, but it was also to talk about kind of all things related to alternative health and wellness, which is something I've been into for a very, very long time. I guess I sort of take for granted that I have acquired, I guess, kind of this knowledge set of practices that seem very normal to me, so I don't really think to share them. But so there's a very old video on my channel called my top five healthy lifestyle product recommendations. And sometime over the summer, someone left a comment on that video saying that they would love to hear kind of a revisited version of that, which I thought was actually a great idea. Five more recommendations a year later or something like that. I actually filmed this video uh, like in August and it was one of those times if you make videos you totally know how this goes it was just like a debacle um, I got <laughs> I was trying to film without the air conditioner and then I got really hot and started sweating so I brought in a fan and then the video was just a hot mess so I didn't put it up and so I've kept meaning to sort of come back and refilm this video to put the information out and what better time than kind of the new year for better or worse in the new year people make lots of healthy resolutions I guess so I guess the timing for this video is a little bit more appropriate now than it was when I initially filmed it so today I'd like to share with you my top five healthy lifestyle recommendations part two a year later. So if you're interested in that initial video, I'll of course link it down below. Those products all still are have an integral place in my life and I still recommend all of those things. And today I have five additional things to share with you. So the first thing on this list is loud and heavy. But it is cast iron skillets. Now, I'm sure a lot of you probably already use cast iron to cook in, but one of the biggest changes that I feel I made when I was kind of doing my green journey, it sounds like so, so cheesy, but when I was really kind of uh, coming to this awareness about all of the ways that we, that our lives are toxic, basically, I switched out lots of things in the kitchen because I felt like that was a very easy thing to switch. So I got rid of my nonstick pans and replaced them with two cast iron skillets. Now these two sizes suit all of my needs. I use this one, this is like my daily workhorse. I cook eggs in this, I heat up food in this, I saute vegetables in this if it's just like a single portion. <clears throat> so the larger one I use for things like browning ground beef or sauteing like a lot of vegetables like cabbage or something and that's kind of like the extent for what I use these for but obviously they're extremely versatile they can go in the oven on the stovetop all of that I guess I think that it's really really important to switch out your cookware because it's something that you are using on a daily basis I also have two aluminum pots so I cook in aluminum aluminum or copper are the best thing to get for your pots wow. and it's a really important and pretty easy switch you'll have these for life and they're not even that expensive they once you get the hang of caring for them they're pretty easy you don't ever wash them with soap you basically use either kind of like a plastic bristle brush or lodge cast iron cells special ones i'm actually just using a repurposed um plastic bristle brush from my juicer because I never use my juicer so I use that to just get out debris with hot water you always want to dry them and then I condition it regularly like every time I've cleaned it with usually ghee I also had some rendered beef tallow that I had had for like a long time and I finally used that up so now I just do like a scoop of ghee and rub it on the inside of the cast iron with either my hand or a paper towel and it keeps it just nicely conditioned. They do become non-stick over time and develop like a patina. You can season them in the oven. I don't know why this is turning into like a video all about cast iron, but I'm a really, really big fan and proponent. So one other quick thing to slip in is that also related to sort of food preparation and storage. I could not live without my Pyrex glass storage. If you're still currently using any kind of like plastic Tupperware, I would highly recommend that you just get rid of all of it and invest in like a 12 piece Pyrex set and use that. Glass is definitely heavier, so it's not as transportable if you're taking food around. For that, I tend to use like Ziploc bags, which is not as, it's not ideal, but if I'm going to be 
taking food into work or something like that. So my second pick is organic jojoba oil. So I personally get so much more use out of jojoba oil than coconut oil, which I feel is the eco, non-toxic world's product darling, except for the fact that a lot of people seem to have coconut oil allergies. I don't, but I just don't seem to rely on coconut oil as much as I do jojoba oil. This is just such a multi-purpose product for me and I can't live without it. I remove my eye makeup with this daily. I use this as a moisturizer, um, particularly on my bikini area after waxing or things like that because it's so non-irritating and I don't want to put oils that have too much other stuff added to them around that area. So that's what I use this for. If I'm traveling, this makes a perfect body oil moisturizer in a pinch. It's just like so multi-purpose and I really like it. It's one of the thinner oils and it just works really, really well for me. I've also read that jojoba oil is one of the oils that most closely mimics the natural balance of your sebum or like the layer of your skin. So I don't know too many people that have bad reactions to jojoba. I have heard of it happening, but I'm also much more comfortable using this around my eye area to remove my eye makeup because I've also heard and read that coconut oil around the eyes can contribute to milia, which are those really tiny little, almost like whiteheads that people can develop around their eyes and they're a pain in the ass to get removed. So I'm super paranoid about that happening. So since then I've developed just a big affinity for and reliance on jojoba oil. And I always get the organic one uh, off Vitacost. It's around $10 for the size. And one of these probably lasts me three months. I would say I probably go through three to four of these a year, maybe not even that much. So can't live without it. Highly recommend it. My next pick for this round of top five products is a sinus rinse. Again, I feel like I might be like preaching to the choir and you guys already know about all of this stuff, but I've personally never used a neti pot, which is sort of the alternative to a sinus rinse. I've only ever used one of these. You can get these literally at any drugstore, CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens will have them, usually I think in the like cold section, because that's generally when people tend to use these. Basically it's just like, comes with a, the actual rinsing tool, and then a bunch of little packets of what is basically salt. And so what you do is you fill this thing up to this line here on the top with warm water. It says always use distilled or micro filtered water. I use the tap water. I mean, it's probably not like the best, but in a pinch, I'm like, I'd rather do this with tap water than not do it because I don't have distilled water or whatever. So you just fill it up with warm water. You want it to be warm because it's gonna hurt if it's cold or hot and you dump one of these packets in. Also sometimes if I'm like really sick and need to clear out, I'll do two packets, which does sting, but it's like a little bit stronger. One packet will not sting at all. Two packets will sting, but it's still bearable. You just like hold your head over the sink and shake it up to disperse the solution and you put the rinse and you start applying pressure and it'll basically force the water up your um, one nostril through the nasal canal and it'll come out the other nostril like into the sink. So you do half the bottle through one nostril and then I tend to like blow my nose and half the, um, the other half of the bottle through the other nostril so it comes out the other side. Basically what this does is it will just help dislodge and remove like debris and mucus and things that are clogging you up in here, especially if you're sick, it's so, amazing it will just decongest you and you will like blow out like green mucus it's this thing is a lifesaver i also tend to just do these more frequently in the winter when it's cold out to kind of keep my nasal passages lubricated if i'm feeling just kind of dry because of indoor heating so i couldn't live without this i tend to replace these i don't know maybe every couple years um you know you keep it clean they last a good long while Neti pots are slightly different in that you there's no like pressure component like this. It's just like a pot that you pour. So that always seemed like a little strange to me. But I couldn't be happier with having this and it's just something that I take for granted that I always have around and always will have around. All right, my fourth pick, I have to be sort of careful because it does have water in it, is a humidifier. I truly could not live without this and I think Unless you live in like, you know, 
the Amazon forest or something where it's really humid all the time, like near the equator. Anybody that lives in any kind of dry climate or indoor heating or anything, I think you would benefit so much from sleeping regularly with a humidifier. When I was growing up, I grew up in upstate New York, so clearly like really, really bad winters, and my little sister had asthma. And so my parents would always have her sleep with a humidifier, and so it was always kind of like a normal thing to me to have one of these, probably for a lot of you as well. And then, I don't know, you know, you go to college and you're in your 20s and like you don't give a shit about humidifiers. <laughs> but then I started caring about what my skin was looking like when I was waking up. And so I invested in this one. This is the Homeotics uh, Ultrasonic Humidifier 1 Gallon model. I got it on Amazon. Couldn't be happier with it. Performs like a dream. Um, I fill up the tank all the way and it'll probably last me for four nights. And I turn this little dial up um, usually to about there. And it's enough to, I mean, you can really make it go full steam and then you'd probably get two uses out of one of the, one tank fill. I can definitely tell when I'm traveling and I am not sleeping with a humidifier or if I've forgotten to turn it on because I was like lazy and came home late or something like that, I can tell. So it's just a really integral part of my life now. And it also provides like a nice, very subtle little white noise. Not, I mean, it's a very, very low hum, but I find it kind of comforting. I'm one of those people that enjoys like the sound of the dryer going or thunderstorms to fall asleep to, like stuff like that. I also uh, just realized that it got quite dark in here. So well, I think the sun is now coming back. I really need to get studio lights. But anyway, my last healthy lifestyle recommendation for you is 100% grass-fed butter. I cannot even tell you how much love and appreciation I have for grass-fed, high-quality butter. The brand I always get is Kerrygold just because I can get it at Whole Foods, but if you have like a local dairy near you and they're making like raw milk butter from pastured cows or anything like that, any kind of high-quality butter, that's made from pastured animals. I personally consider a health food, but this is because I am a traditional foodist or I try and practice traditional food principles in my life. This is like a narrative for another video that I promise I will do at some point. I really sort of feel like my life changed in a very profound way when I dropped a lot of my kind of mainstream traditional dieting beliefs and adopted a much more kind of like traditional foods, whole foods, non-restrictive approach to food. So just as like a quick personal anecdote, I had a very, very long history of disordered eating from my mid-teens through mid to late 20s. And I can say that that part of my life is completely behind me now. I don't even recognize that person. And butter was like an integral part of coming out of that way of being and becoming someone that's just very happy and content and enjoys food and doesn't have mental anxieties about it. This is getting like kind of really personal, but the reason why I think butter is so important is because when people have, this is just all my personal opinion too, by the way, it's not like medical advice or like scientifically grounded in anything, this is just my perspective. When people have um, food hang-ups or kind of moral attachments to food, like food is good, food is bad, I'm going to have a cheat day, um, or people that crave sugar a lot. I used to crave like peanut butter constantly or cereal or like sweets and cakes and things like that. My personal opinion, at least from my experience, is that this was because I was not getting enough fat, particularly animal fat, and I know that that will probably be controversial to say because a lot of people in the eco-beauty world are vegan or vegan leaning, and it's just not a philosophy that, that personally worked for me in any capacity. When I started um, more, regularly, more regularly eating high quality animal fat, like my food cravings changed, my the way that I ate changed, everything changed. It really like changed my life in this like very profound way. It's not even hyperbolic. It just didn't happen overnight, but over the period of a couple years, I feel like my body sort of resets. And I eat butter every single day. I really have internalized that it's a health food and it's helped me in just a lot of ways. I 
Never thought that I would be someone that like doesn't have a sweet tooth or doesn't crave sugar or could contain myself around having sweets in the house. And it's just like not the person that I am anymore. I'm kind of um, much more balanced, I guess, and not neurotic about what I eat, which is um, if any of you have ever struggled with food neuroses, then you know that it's just kind of like a mental prison. And so to be free of that is just like, I feel like a new person. So if you're curious to hear me like talk more about traditional foods or my past with like all of that stuff, I think I have enough distance from it now to be able to talk about it a little bit more candidly and personally. So if that's something that you would be interested in hearing more about, definitely do let me know in the comments. So I definitely rambled uh, a little more than I was intending to, but I hope you guys enjoyed hearing these healthy lifestyle product picks. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or you'd like to see me do more kind of healthy living, alternative lifestyle sorts of things. If you have particular suggestions or things you'd like to see or hear me talk about, I'm always soliciting feedback and ideas. If you have given me a recommendation and I haven't yet executed it, Please just know that I do keep a bank of all of your ideas and they're things that I'm always kind of planning and thinking about and I intend for you to see them eventually. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take good care and I'll see you really soon. Bye.